How you doing guys and welcome to part three of how to get a seven on your IA. Thanks for tuning in. Just remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and if this video helps you out in your IA at all, make sure you drop a like on it. If you've got any comments or something else you'd like to see, put them below and I'll try and get back to you. Also, make sure you check out the Twitter and Instagram. I often post some images of what my students are doing in class, which might give you some ideas for your IA. So part three, the analysis. This is really the make or break section. This is where you demonstrate a whole bunch of skills that you've learned during the IB program and put those in to application from your internal investigation. So the first part of your analysis is your table of results. You want qualitative and quantitative data and they must be in tables. So make sure you put your observations and all the data that you collect in nicely presented tables. Make sure that those tables are all on one page, that they don't go across two pages. Your raw data, it should contain the uncertainty. So whatever the uncertainty of the glassware or the instrument that you're using, make sure you put that in the top of the column. When you're collecting the data, you want to have consistent significant digits. So if your balance is accurate to three decimal places, then all of your values should be to three decimal places. You want consistency in that measuring. After you've collected all the data, now you need to begin the processing. And the processing is where you lead the reader through how you have taken that data and interpreted it in a way to either answer your research question or to produce a graph or to calculate a concentration. But what you must do here is you must commentate your process. So by commentate, if you're finding the number of moles, don't just find the number of moles and stick in the numbers. You need to say, we are going to find the number of moles of, present the formula, do the calculation. Step the reader through the process. Also, as you're going through that process, make sure you include the units. So make sure that your units and your significant figures are consistent throughout. Now, if you've got a whole bunch of data and you're doing your processing, which might take up a fair bit of space, you don't need to show all of your processing. You need to show all of the steps you've taken for one sample of your processing. If all of the other data is processed in the exact same way, you simply show it once and then present the rest in a table. A really nice, neat way of presenting the data. Show Only show one calculation, present the rest in a table. Now you need to get up to the propagation of your uncertainties. And the best way to start this is to show all the measurements you've taken and their uncertainties and present those in a table. It just helps focus on what you're about to do. Now the easiest way to do this is to determine the percentage uncertainties for each of the apparatus that you've used. So calculate those percentage uncertainties. Then you need to add those percentage uncertainties together to get your total percentage uncertainty. At the end, you want to take your value from your processing and record the absolute uncertainty. So this is where you change it from a percentage to a decimal. And you express your final answer, including the value and the absolute uncertainty. I would then go through and show all of my results with their associated uncertainties in a final table so that it is easy to read and it's going to be easy to either draw a graph or start to analyse. So the last part of the analysis would be to produce a meaningful graph. So you've got all this data with the uncertainties, you've calculated it correctly, now it's a good time to present a graph. If you're presenting a graph or simply looking at the table of the data, you must analyze that data. What do all those values mean to you? You must explain that to the reader. So analyze your data, looking at trends, drawing on the things you've learned during the IB program and putting that analysis in before you draw your conclusion. So here are some things to avoid for the analysis. Inconsistent significant digits. If you're changing the number of significant digits, that's going to have an impact on this section and also the communication section. Incorrect calculations. So something as simple as leaving it as centimetres cubed rather than decimetres cubed, that can have a massive impact on your calculations. So triple check those calculations. Another big problem is the omission of uncertainties. And the uncertainty that a lot of students will miss is the temperature uncertainty. So make sure you've got that one. Another 
point in the analysis is that graphs are sometimes poorly labelled or students will produce a bar graph. Bar graphs are no good. You need to have scatter plots and scatter plots with smooth lines are better than where you connect the dots like they did in Sesame Street. Another thing to avoid is not having any analysis of your results. You need to analyse them and say what they mean. You want to present all of your information before you draw your conclusion. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and in the next one we're going to talk about part four, which is the conclusion.